All right there. Hello YouTube and welcome to um, our next set of tutorials here. We're going to be covering, um, we've pretty much covered everything that's within here. Uh, if there's anything I've missed, um, I know I've missed map, but we'll be getting to that much later on. That's um, a lot to do what, what, with, uh, with what we're doing today actually, but um, we're not going to we're not going to deal with this just yet. Setup, um, we're not going to deal with uh, until we reach fiber effects. Um, and that's to do with uh, trees. Uh, we might use it for hair, I guess. But for the most part, we'll be using uh, fiber effects within here for trees. Um, layers, are, we've already gone over. This is just, these are just, you know, little tools. Um, you can. If there's anything I haven't done, you can always just practice and see what they do. Um, I pretty much showed you everything that you actually need to know. And today I'm actually going to show you how to... Uh, I've shown you how to name surfaces, but now I'm going to show you how to actually texture a surface so that it looks good to an extent at least. So I'm going to do the most basic thing that we can do uh, right now. I'm not going to do it, it makes sense, um, so it's going to look nice, and it um, it's basic, so it's not going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be a little bit skinnier than that. Um, no, it's going to be a little bit skinnier along there as well. Um, just trying to look at it as, as reference, I actually maybe a little bit thicker, yeah, because I still can't quite carry one with one hand, it depends on the uh, a natural box, I suppose, uh, or the or the producers of the, of the box, anyways. Um, so you may be asking, what am I making here? And, and you'll see. Um, but we're going to be covering texturing here. So um, I'm going to be taking this box here, which is a super simple object, and I'm going to texture it, and it's going to look, you know, moderately well at the very least. Um, oh, my cat woke up. I woke up my cat. Oh, well, don't really care. So, what have I done here? Well, um, <laughs> doesn't look like much. Just a little uh, thing here. But what we've created is a cereal box, uh, and there is a good reason as to why I chose a cereal box over um, pretty much anything else. Is that a cereal box is simply um, six sides. There's no angles. Um, it's uh, there's no um, rounded parts like that. There's no rounded parts. Um, it's just really basic six sides, which means we need six textures, and it's just, it's simple, it's basic. And it'll just be easy as hell. Um, so there's multiple ways we can do this. Um, we can name each individual side. Um, so, I mean, we can do it like this, yeah. Now, when it comes to naming, I usually either use, da use a dash or use a dot to separate my letter or words instead of a space like that. Because when you start using spaces, um, you're kind of applying it to all this other stuff. So if I say fibers, effects like that I might be you know just losing my mind I might be in the surface editor I'm gonna see fibers effects and I'm gonna think it's a fiber effect when in reality it's a surface so it helps to put dashes or a period as a way to just organize it for you a little bit better so let's put box front Now the benefit of naming uh, multiple surf surfaces, once you name one, you can just take the original name and change it, so back. <coughs> now on a box, a uh, cereal box, the two sides are actually different, so it's dependent on what you want um, for which side, so we're going to be naming either side for left and right. And we will be giving a bottom as well because if we animate it to fall over we want the bottom to be visible if um, your animation will not include this part being visible 
you don't have much reason to texture it, but you're welcome to if you want to. It's just gonna slow down your computer that much more. So we've labeled this as the front. Um, and we could tell um, a variety of ways if we went into surface editor and we changed the color of front to say black, then uh, we'll notice that that's front. Another way is if we press W uh, and then go to part, which is currently selected as none. Oh, oh no, surface, which is currently selected as none. And we click on front and then click that plus, it'll select the front for us. And that's how, that's how statistics work, is if you click the plus, it will select it. If you click the negative, it will deselect. Um, you just have to read, you know, see what they do. So we've got four, four vertices, uh, six polygons with four vertices. So that's all the polygons, you know, it's just, that's, that's how it works. So you just kind of play around with that. You'll, f you'll figure it out. Um, so that's the front, which means that this here is the left side and this here is the right side. So let's call this, oh, call this left and we're going to put um, stats. Now there's a reason for that and it, once again it's all um, opinion based. You don't have to do this when you design a serial box. Um, you can call it whatever you want. You know I could call this Bill or Bob or whatever. Um, but the reason why is because um, serial boxes have um, sort of calorie counts and a whole bunch of information that goes on one side and I've decided that the left side will be where the stats go so that's why I named it stats now maybe serial boxes only have those stats on the right side but that's irrelevant because when we create our animation people aren't gonna pay attention to those little details which at least they shouldn't alright so now I've got this box um, <laughs> what <laughs> What do I do with it? It's got six sides. We've named each side, which is, um, if anything, a little bit of a pain in the ass because now we've got a bunch of these, including default. But mm, now, now what do we do? All right, well, let's texture it. First of all, we have to find a texture. So we have to go to Google. Oh, you can see it already. <laughs> and this is what I found. This is, uh, <laughs> this is pretty amazing. So there's the stats, there's, um, just a coupon and extra information. Um, there's the bottom and the top and the front. Now, how did I find this? It's so easy. You don't have to. You don't have to um, stress yourself over trying to find a texture. This is so easy. I just went to Google and I typed in cereal box UV map, and that gives me a map of a, of separate textures. If you if you ever look up a texture. Um, I'm thinking of a good one. Um, for example, car oh, card board box UV texture. Now I might not find one, but I might as well. Boom! There you go. A UV texture. Uh, now you may be asking, what is a UV texture? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. Um, basically, it's a set of pictures that um, that have been sort of cut up in a way that you can apply it to each side. So we're going to take this image here, we're going to save the image as, let's just put it on our desktop so we can find it easier, you can, you can put it wherever you, where, wherever you want. I do not recommend the desktop. Um, if you're making a really small, and I mean a really small project, you can use a desktop. But otherwise, don't, because um, otherwise it'll uh, clog up your system, because it'll be full of textures. So, if we go to box front, uh, we click on the T, which stands for texture. We load in an image. Now this is under planar, so what this means is um, However, it's fit in the Z axis, it will apply that texture in the Z axis. We can see that right here it says Z, right here it says Z, and we can't see it there. But 
points here. So we can see that this face is pointing towards Z, which means that the texture will be laid flat against the Z axis. Now, for any of you who actually do know what a UV map is, any of you that actually do know how to use one, know that I'm using it wrong. But don't worry, I, I, I do know what I'm doing, I'm just... <clears throat> So you'll, you'll, you'll usually get something like this, um, or you might get something that's really big. Just click on automatic size, and it'll, it'll sort of fit it to some extent. Um, and then what you do is you take a scale here, and you just play with the scale. Uh, Z won't work. Z won't do anything because it's laid on the Z. Um, but we can take Y here. We have to stretch it up to about there. And let's try and find a middle ground for this. Okay, good. It seems to be um, staying in one position when I play with the x-axis. You'll notice that CP3PO is being stretched a bit. Um, if we wanted to, we could sort of play around with it. So we could like say, oh, that looks moderately good. So what we could do is um, take the object and actually manipulate the object to um, change its size and um, as a result we'll cut off that texture. Uh, so about there. So there it's about the right size now. And it's n nowhere close to a n perfect texture here. Um, but I am just kind of winning it pretty much so so let's do that it's not bad looking <clears throat> the benefit of a um, UV map is it gives you all the textures in one single picture so you don't need multiple pictures you just need to name each side and once again this is not the proper way of doing it but it's the easy way of doing it and it's the starter way of doing it if you will so if you're new to this program, this is a good way to start off. So we, we're at the back now because it says back here, we're gonna texture it. Let's apply our C3PO texture and automatic size it. And the back is this part uh, because it does not have the label. That's the label. This is uh, just a random picture that they've decided to put on. So let's uh, center this a little bit. Now his face, it's a bit weird. Uh, no, it should be fine. I was gonna say it's gonna be stretched, isn't it? Because it's because of the the way we've done our box, but uh, I don't care. Yeah, it's gonna be really stretched, but he's also interesting. Ah, uh, that's why. So let's just keep on going. Okay, 36 meters, it should be. Oh, that's position, what am I doing? I'm a flipping retard, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now does that look? Huh, that looks, it looks okay. I mean, for a quick random box that I didn't take any measurements into account, it's okay. Um, it'll look better once I get his um, X scale back to normal. Actually, yeah, it's going to look perfectly fine, surprisingly. Let's do both there. Now, one thing I hate about um, LightWaves Modeler is that you'll notice that here we have a bunch of... You can't really see it if you zoom in because it'll uh, not quite work that way. Um, but you'll notice that we have anti-aliasing issues. If you don't know what anti-aliasing is, um, is or aliasing is when you have jagged edges. So you can see here, we have a bunch of jagged edges going along the top. And the problem with that is I can't see if it's perfectly aligning with them. Um, now maybe there's a way to change that, but if you change it, the likelihood is your, um, why is that in the negative? That shouldn't be in the negative. Oh wait, that's why. Okay, let's just pop that back into the positive because that doesn't look great.
we could keep a little bit of yellow or yellow white to try and make that transition and oh my god you'll you'll notice that here we actually have it inverted um, which we can deal with uh, not by inverting the layer because that will invert the color of it so I don't think that's the correct thing to do uh, we might be able to rotate it uh, if I'm not mistaken Whoop. no that's certainly not the right way turn that to zero pitch no no that's not it I'll turn it upside down it must be heading then There we go. We got it back. That's why I thought I, I thought that um five meters was a bit a bit big. Um, I'm glad that they um were smarter than that. Sorry guys, I didn't quite notice that while I was I was doing it. I'm sure you guys did. You're like, shut up, you're doing it wrong. Um, but I fixed it. So if you notice that, you have to, yeah, you're gonna have to double check the words. Um, now, if my um, box here wasn't going to be seen from the back, um, I wouldn't worry about the words. But um, since I don't actually have any plans to actually animate this, um, I might as well go with perfection to some extent. Looks all right. I've got that. I've got that. Uh, let's do the rest. Um, go our left, which includes the stats. So let's load the texture for that, and we're going to automatically size it. Now you'll notice here it's being stretched, um, just sort of randomly, and there's a reason for that. That's because we still have it on the Z axis which means this um, texture is still being applied over the z-axis which means it's just essentially stretching it um, because it can't apply it that way um, so here we have the x-axis so this polygon is facing the x-axis so if we switch this to x you'll see it's appeared now uh, automatic size it which will make it look a bit wonky but that's alright now our fins are right in the middle which is actually kind of a good thing I kind of like that the fact that it's right in the middle um, because that means Y is going to be a bit easier to set I'm not too worried about these little lips um, if you're really a perfectionist you could worry about those but I'm not going to I'm not going to fret about it now we can't apply X here because um, it's textured on the X so we can only play with the Y. I keep up. I I always forget about that. So once again, we can't apply X. We can only plus Z because I'm a retard. Scale Z position. Now here's where having knowledge of um, the different settings it becomes useful, and I'll show you that in a second once I get this perfectly in place oh my god that's actually really well done uh, if I just let a little bit of white going across there you can see that it kind of matches a bit excellent I like that <clears throat> all right so you'll notice that um, here we have it pretty much perfectly placed and there's a benefit to knowing how light wave works when it comes to texturing so if we go back to our texture here for our left copy that so we click on copy and you'll notice that we can copy selected layers or all layers now by default the first layer will be selected so we can just say selected layers now that's been copied it doesn't tell us it's been copied but it has been so just click use texture now we can go to the right side click on texture and we can say paste and then replace selected layers or we can say replace all layers do not add to layers replace now that will it'll need to be flipped of course but um, it, it sort of saved our job of having to um, kind of get the size perfect 
so we, we already have the size already perfect now I'm just gonna quickly go to the back and we're gonna see what rotation I required for the heading and I'm gonna control C copy that and I'm gonna I'm, I'm being as lazy as possible because it's the easier way of doing this now all I have to do is say position and I have to find the other side which I think is located right here now because we decided to rotate it it does change the scale slightly but it does not change the Y scale so I don't have to reset the Y scale just the Z scale so I'm just gonna play around with that a little bit until we get our nice little texture going now believe me there are easier ways uh, easier ways of doing this there really are but like I said this is for somebody who's just not used to doing this yet and I don't want you to do this all the time because it's a big waste of time but it is sort of a quick way to understand what is happening and understand how to do it so there is not that's not bad I'm starting to regret um, having that little bit of white it matches up with this but it doesn't match up with this so I, I'm a bit festered about that so I'm going to get rid of that um, that white there so let's go back into here and we're playing with X and that's position so I'm a crazy bastard again and scale X pretty good and then I'm going to quick, quickly go to this one and get rid of that white line um, just because it, it's a bit of a nuisance that's all well that's perfect close enough you can, you can see it's kind of clipping through a little bit because uh, I think that's it's hard to say could move that over just a little bit more see what happens so that's certainly covered there's no doubt about that so yeah it's this one that's um, got to be moved over just a little bit more There we go, perfectly covered up. Perfectly covered up. All right, so let's do the top. <laughs> and I, I really mean it when I say this is not the way you do it, but it is a good start. It's just, this is taking way longer than it should. So once again, it's being stretched along the Z axis. Uh, so this is polygon is facing up, which means it's facing the Y axis. So we set it to Y and there we go. Uh, now let's see what kind of top this has. Does it have lettering on it? Yes, it does. Is it facing the right direction? Yes, it is. So we're good on that on that sense. So we can um, uh, where am I? Automatic size it, uh, which hasn't really helped us that much, but I think we'll be fine. Let's move it that way. Move it down a bit. Then we're going to have to really stretch her. way and let's put you to the edge and scale you along here and then scale you along here scale you on I'm sure you guys can see it coming along already but uh the reason why I'm not cutting this is I just want the newbies to um, 
basically see what's happening and how I'm doing this over and over so that it kind of sticks in their head. That's pretty much how I learned it is I just did it over and over and I, I just remembered it over time. Now of course if you get a higher resolution picture because that picture I got it was an alright resolution it wasn't um, the highest resolution I could have gotten but it was an alright one. Is that fucking perfect? I think it is. Jesus Christ. Um, stretch it along the X. Move it a bit to the side. Stretch it the rest of the way. Because as you stretch these um, textures, it will lose quality because you're essentially sizing it up. And this texture here, its quality is, um, well, I, I don't remember. It's moderately sized. If we uh, go into show folder here, we have uh, 1102 by 956. So it's a little bit over HD, but it's not. An HD texture um, is pretty old. That's not something that's new or good. The front there is a bit messed up. I'm going to fix that. There we go. Alright. So that's looking alright. <coughs> so the, um, yeah, the, uh, that's looking really good so far, actually. I like that. Um, so now we all got the bottom. Uh, all we got left is the bottom. Um, so let's go bottom. Texture. I was saying something, but I forgot, so I don't really care. Oh yeah, um, if it's a low, if it's a low resolution picture, it's going to be low resolution texture, obviously. Um, a higher resolution texture, the better the texture is going to be. Um, but you can only, you can still only stretch it so much until it just doesn't, well, work. Now, I'm actually afraid, do we have, uh, it's just a repetition of that. Oh, except for it's got a, a little droid on the bottom. So, it, it's not visible here, so let's uh, take the rotation. I did not flip it enough. 180, yeah, 180 which makes sense but there we go now is the text the right direction let's think here um, so from the bottom it should be readable from the bottom it is not readable so we've got this wrong so it's not that ah there you go That's 180. Let's reduce that back to zero. Um, so when it comes to rotation, pretty much guess and check. Uh, just use your use your brain. Like that doesn't look right. <laughs> you know, it's pretty pretty obvious in that sense. Um, I know of some people they can just visualize it. They can realize what that really means. But for me, I just don't care. So let's move that way. Let's move it up. Oh. Up, I said. Up! Wah! Now we're going to have to do that quite a bit, actually. Move it. Let's actually not move it negative, because I don't like negative numbers. They are not fun. Alright. Scale. Do quite a bit more. Position. looking pretty good there surprisingly and oh so close just a little bit further and I would have definitely done it there 
Ah, oh, come on. No, it's just a bit too big. So reduce it just a little bit. Bring this over a little bit more. Bring this over. Okay, just a little bit more. You want to sort of keep it as perfect as possible because you'll have a better resolution that way, better better texture uh, texture there. That's uh, as as good as that can get there. Oh, and there we go. We have fully textured a cereal box, and it's actually not that bad looking. Uh, yeah, we we have to zoom in quite a lot for it to actually start losing its um its style. So if we were to sort of dress this up, give it a good environment, um, you know, a table, some chairs, the background of a kitchen, it would look pretty darn real, um, you know, aside from the bad effects. Oh, sorry, um, <laughs> for any of you uh, fans out there, I, I love the Star Wars movies, I'm just making fun of the effects. Anyways, so what else do we have for texturing, like, is there actually anything because I know that just having a texture is not actually going to look that good. There's things that textures have that make textures look good. Well, you have luminosity, you have diffuse, you have specularity, glossiness, reflection, transparency, refraction index, translucency, and bump. I've already gone over this when uh, we did um, our last tutorial I sort of went into it and this is going to require some software so you cannot do this in lightwave but we'll be uh, we'll be needing it for for lightwave so what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a specularity map it's also known as a reflection map and it's also known as a bump map. Um, do not, don't use it as a diffuse map because it'll look horrible. Um, but we're, we're going to be using it, uh, it as a specularity map and there's a good reason for that. Um, we're not going to be using it as a bump map and that's also for good reason. So what we have to do is we have to create our map. Now what that means is we're going to take our texture and we're going we're gonna to change it. So I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop CS6 for this. Um, I'm sure you can use any program, but with CS6 it takes three seconds. It's quick as nails, like it's instant. So I'm just going to quickly load this up, open, go to our desktop. C C3PO's uh, thingy. Now, what we're how we make a um, specularity map is we go to image adjustments, black and white. So we have to turn the entire thing black and white. Adjustments, brightness, contrast, and then just play with it until it looks sort of nice. You want it so that you have dark lines you have bright lines and you have only a few in the middle so a good example is looking at this uh, this guy's hair you know you kinda want to strengthen these dark lines and you kinda want to brighten these bright parts here Just darken that a bit and there we go so that looks alright it's pretty much a guess you know just kinda go with with the flow really so that's a JPEG, let's keep it with the JPEGs. But let's call this BW for black and white. Uh, we can put a little space there if we want to. Uh, maximum quality. I'm sure you can do this in any other program, but I can't tell you how because I use Photoshop. 
you know, we can close that. We're done with that. That's how we make a map. And it doesn't want to close. There we go. Alright, so let's do this. So we have the front, we have our back, we have it all textured. Now how we do this is we're going to take our back here. Uh, since it's at the top of the list, it doesn't really matter. We could start with the front. Yeah, let's start with the front, it doesn't matter. Go to texture, copy, and then under specularity, we're going to paste it. But we're going to replace this image with the black and white one. You click use texture. Now we go to back, click on texture, and we do this for all of them. Now don't forget to, like for example, I can't, um, I went to the front, I copied this, I pasted it into here, then I switched it to the black and white one. I could, I can't just go here, go here, and then click paste again. I have to copy this because it's scale, position, and or rotation is different from the front. And I have to make sure that I copy that information. So you can't just continue pasting into specularity. You have to take this, copy, and then paste into here. Take this, copy, and then paste into here. Take this, copy, paste into here. And uh, if I'm not sounding very lively or anything like I usually do, it's probably because it's 2.36 a.m. And I just, I felt like doing this right now. So I guess I'm a crazy bastard. And switch to black and white. I'm just going to make sure that they're all black and white, which they aren't, because I knew I forgot that. Yeah. That's okay, you just gotta, gotta make sure you've, you've got them. So it's looking alright. It's looking all set up. Alright, so what does specularity do? Well, I've kind of already gone over it. It sort of adds a shine, a gleam to it. But the point of a specularity map is that it will add the shine, it will add the gleam in the proper places, in the places that it's supposed to go to. So essentially it's going to look proper, it's going to look like it's supposed to shine there. And we all know that, um, and I don't mean it's going to look reflective, it's not going to be reflective like that, it's, it's just going to look moderately shiny, it's, you know, it's not going to be reflective. It's just going to be sort of have this gloss, not glossiness, just sort of, it'll, you'll see the light, but it's sort of like a, just a hot spot of the light. It's essentially that right there. You can see it right there and we can play with it. We can make it a little bit bigger, which I think we should. I think 20% looks all right in that uh, view there. So I'll apply 20% to all of them because I'm a lazy bastard and I, don't feel like doing anything else. I'm not even sure if that's the right thing. I think it is, yeah. Alright, so we applied that, and that makes it, that just gives it that sort of realistic look. Um, I could plop this into layout, but if I did that, it wouldn't look realistic. And the reason why is because in order to get something, to look realistic you need to have a environment around it to also make it look realistic so you need to create an entire environment so if I wanted to make this box here look like it's a real life box of cereal sitting there I need you know a table some chairs a kitchen desktop or a, like a desktop kitchen countertop and so a sink and you know, some things hanging from the ceiling, a fridge, stove, I would require all of it, all textured. Um, if, if, if they're all 3D, the better. I, I could just make a 2D image of a kitchen in the background and that might help it, but it wouldn't be as effective if it was all 3D, like a 3D oven, a 3D stove, 
everything 3D and it was all there, it would look photorealistic. But the problem with that is it, you need high resolution t textures and you need um, a lot of time and it takes a, v a very long time and you have to be really into it to actually um, do it and then I'll show you um, what I've got here um, I've got my first full scene and you'll notice I've got alphas, bumps, decals, dynamics, HDRs, intro stuff, movie files, object scenes, test renders, textures now here's where the textures come in I have a lot of textures and they are very high resolution and I don't even have that many I've got three metal um, nine stone including a desert texture which shouldn't be there but I was too lazy to make a separate folder and for some reason there's um, some cry engine stuff there somewhere in all that two four uh, plus miscellaneous 10 uh, wooden textures and in total I've caused this file to be worth a hundred megabytes just in textures alone just in little photo photographs that's how much these are, are worth and that's because things like this look how big they are 2240 by 1545 2177 by 1347 so these are very high resolution textures and they look realistic but I have this is barely anything this is really barely anything uh, and when you're doing 3d animation the thing that takes the most amount of space is actually the objects the objects themselves are pretty big especially when you, once you get into really high-end objects for example, if you go full characters here, I've got my female character. She is worth 1.31 um, megabytes. And you have to remember this all adds up. You keep on adding to this over and over and over and over. And before you know it, you're actually, here I'll show you. 20 gigabytes. This file, this folder has 20 gigabytes of it, of data in it. it has textures, it has objects, it has um, bumps and alphas, tons of stuff. So here's an alpha of shingles that I used at one point. Here we have a bunch of our bumps, or specularity maps, but maps, they're, they're the same thing. So here's all my textures in black and white. Like it's insane, it really is insane. So if you're going for a large scale project you have to remember that you're going to be dealing with a lot of stuff and you have to really you have to really um organize it dirty cam texture what's this oh i see no i've i've got a better way of doing that now i don't need that anymore um i've got this this here which i ha uh, which i did for a while um it's for my grandma i was developing a scene for her So that I actually built this in Lightwave. It was all, it was all right. It's not my best scene or anything, but it's uh, it's okay. So there's a vignette around it. Vignette is uh, this little post processing thing here. Here's another vignette with a stronger sun. Here's a vignette with an even stronger sun with uh, flares around it. So. Uh, it's based on realism. It looks pretty realistic here. Um, a real artist can see its uh, flaws, but you know when a regular person glances at this, they're going to be like, "That looks like a painting." Well, it's not. I made this in 3D animation. This is a two-dimensional wall. This is a two-dimensional wall, and the ground here is three-dimensional. So the only thing that the only thing that's actually three-dimensional is the hills which is interesting you have to remember that um, a lot of 3d animation even when it comes to g video games it's all about lying to you it's all about fake falseness uh, I should delete that because that's uh, a fail failed attempt you'll notice here we have sky and here we do not that's because uh, the the type of PNG I, I chose which was PNG 32 I think does not support 
um, transparencies. But the PNG twenty four, I think it is, does. So I had to, I had to use that. Um, I don't think I can use that. That looks like it's corrupted. Weird. So, yeah, most of games are actually, it's all false. It's all fake. Uh, I'm sure if you've played any Half Life Two games or any Source games, I'm sure at one point in time you've fallen through the floor, and if you look up, you'll actually notice that the floor has no other side to it it's like transparent on the other side for example when you're playing a game you see this like if you fall through the floor and you look up you see nothing you see through it well that's because it that it doesn't exist why it doesn't need to it shouldn't exist really so uh, games are really all about that it's just about cheating who's the better cheater that's really really all it's about for example the bottom of a car in most games that's just a 2d texture most games for example um, I don't know if I can find it GTA 4 I probably can't find it but no, I didn't think I would be able to. If you if you have GTA 4 or GTA 5, for that ma for, as a matter of fact, and you look at the bottom of a car, it's flat. There should be pipes there. There should be all sorts of stuff, but it's flat. Why? Because you're never going to look at the bottom of a car. It's a cheat. That's what it is. That's, that's all what 3D animation... That's all what game design is about. It's about how can I cheat you into thinking something is there when it's not. So, so for example, it's the same thing with, with that scene I showed you. Um, under Lightweight Files here, Grandma Scene, uh, Renders. You know, it's the same thing. These mountains are not real mountains. I can't take my camera and look in between these little ridges here because this is a 2D texture. This is not 3D. It just looks 3D. And uh, you'll even notice that it's a texture because we have the sun here. We have shadows going along here. We have light going along here, which is all perfectly fine. But that is a shadow. That shadow is actually going the opposite direction of where the sun is. Here we've got a shadow. But the sun is here. <laughs> Doesn't that look a little wrong? Technically, the sun should be way off in the distance over here, roughly around the, in that direction. Yet, it's over here, and we're getting shadows along here. Now, I could have gone into Photoshop, and I could have played around a few hours and fixed that. Did I? No. Why? Because people are not going to notice it. I, I fully expect people not to realize this. Another thing which people might have not, no, not noticed, or you might have not noticed, look at this, a perfect peak. Look at these two peaks, then look at these two peaks, and these peaks, these peaks, these peaks, over here and then over here. Look uh, right here, it's cut off right here. Just look at these, these um, areas here you'll notice that they're actually perfectly the same the reason why is because the texture I can't I can't actually show anything here the texture is actually a small texture but I've mirrored it so here's where the cutoff line is and it's mirrored it over here so this little ridge here this point that's a mirror image of this little ridge this little spike here is a mirror image of this little spike. And it's just mirrored over and over. You can look at these in fine detail. And they're perfectly the same. And you probably didn't notice that right away. You probably looked at this and you were like, wow, this looks cool. But it's all fake. It really is. Here you can see the cutoff line. It's perfectly mirrored, just perfect, perfectly.
and that's how I tricked you. I mean, for some people it didn't work, obviously. And the sun helps, because the sun helps as a distraction from the imperfections. So here we have a really strong sun that actually kind of blinds out some of the mountain itself. So it kind of draws attention away from the mirrored mountains. And yeah, that's basically all it is. It's just mirrored. It's really cool. It's really cool how you, once you start 3D animation, you start to realize just how fake everything really is when it comes to video games, animations you see. It's pretty amazing. All right, so the next video we're gonna be, um, I'm gonna be doing is uh, gonna be on sub patch modeling. Sub patch modeling, it looks like this. Well, it's a bad example with this texture. Um, but sub patch modeling looks like this. I just, well, of course, screw you. I wanna keep my nice little guy. Um, I just go into here, create another box, call it, um, box. Sub patch modeling um, looks like this. A friend of mine asked, okay, so how can I make a, how can I make a head? <clears throat> and that's a great question. Um, a head, a specifically a human head, because I have um, other examples of <laughs> slightly more complicated things. For example, my monster. Um, I could load this, but I'm afraid it might crash because I'm recording. Um, but this monster here, its head has um, quite a lot of polygons. I tried ZBrush for a while. I was disappointed. Um, yeah, I can't really show the female character either. She al she also has quite a lot of polygons. Um, this is her texture for pants. Really bad texture. I have to replace it. But anyways, um, so sub patch modeling is basically it takes all these edges, these little edges, and it rounds them off to make it look more smooth. So the more polygons you have closer to the edges, the more sort of perfectly rounded it's going to become. So basically it's all it's for is um, detailed modeling. And when I say detailed modeling, I mean detailed modeling. You can see just how sort of perfectly organic that looks right there. So it's all about modeling really organic things and that's when a human head would come in play because a human head is obviously organic uh, I, I can create a quick example of um, of this so if I go like this let's do that. that's pretty up a bit I'm just gonna make something really quick I'm gonna metaform this Wait, no, do I want to do that? Metaphor. Yeah. I'm going to take that. This is some uh, slightly more advanced modeling because I have I know what I'm doing to some extent. just being quiet because I'm focusing here. I'll just show you some quick sub patch modeling here to get your spirits up or whatever.
So you'll notice I'm already um, making a finger. Now, is it in, 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 in any way a realistic finger? No. But it's a low poly, polygon finger. And what if I wanted to make it look a lot more organic, a lot more human-like? Well, that's where sub-patch modeling comes in place. Now, let's just give this a little bit more of an organic type of shape to it. Now we press tab to enter sub patch mode. Boom! There you go. A finger. And a moderately realistic looking one. Um, sort of alien like, maybe cartoonish style. And that's what sub patch modeling is. It's sort of. It rounds things off. So it makes it look more organic. So if I start. Oop, I keep on pressing R, which is rotate. You don't want to do that. I can make it look like you maybe bruised it a little bit. It's bad. It's not exactly a good example because it was one polygon. But if I had more polygons, I could make it look like a detailed bruise. Um, if I had a lot of polygons, for example, if I were to take this, construct, no, multiply, bandsaw. Let's enter texture wire here so I can see what I'm doing. Actually, that's the wrong place, isn't it? Yeah, that is the wrong place. Let's, um, I made this our knuckle. Even though it's not quite pushed up enough. But I suppose that's not bad. But what I could do here is Bandsaw Pro not quite doing what I want it to do. Hold on. Bandsaw Pro. Bandsaw Pro. Looking a little bit more bony. But if I then take these here. Keep on pressing R. I gotta stop pressing R. So basically I just made wrinkles that you have on your knuckle. It's not detailed wrinkles, that's for sure. I, I haven't spent much time on them, but I could try and fix it here. I don't think I'll be able to very well though. I'm pretty tired. Um, what the hell am I doing? There we go. I take these and squish them in a bit more. Go symmetry. Nope, symmetry doesn't work. Sometimes symmetry just doesn't work. Take these points, bring them in. Uh, so that's basically what I did. I just created wrinkles that you have on your fingers. Um, I could do the same up here that I've created here.
the big problem is you need a lot of polygons in order to do that sort of detail work. Otherwise, you just make it look weird. But yeah, there you go. There's some basic sub patch modeling. Um, you can give it a try. I wouldn't go for realistic. I would go for cartoony, basic. I wouldn't even go for wrinkles because that's pretty complex. You can see just the amount of polygons it required. I would go with something like this. If not, even this. Just go with something really basic, you know, simple. Don't don't go over your head because sub patch modeling is confusing. It's complex, but it does have methods. There is a way to actually do it properly, and I will get into that later on. Um, we will probably not be constructing a real head because it takes forever to actually build a head. For some people, maybe not. For other people, yes. So for me specifically, it takes me a long time. It takes me weeks to build a character's head, and sometimes it just doesn't even turn out right. So I wouldn't risk it. Um, you can search up tutorials for it, but um, like I mean, I can kind of get you started for something like that. But um, certainly don't have to have to do that just yet. So it's not bad, this anyways. Um, it's not super realistic, but I mean, if you if you spend a lot of time with it, you can get it to that point at which it looks nice or realistic, if you will. And as as a um, new person to Lightwave, I recommend that you not freak out about trying to get realistic results yet. It's going to take you a while before you can reach that point where you can create realistic things. So just be patient and work with unrealistic stuff. Work with stuff that looks worse than this. You know, get practice essentially because you're not going to go anywhere if you just argue and don't do much. Um, I'm just going to grab these two points. I'm going to bring them outward a bit. Yeah, like that. And bring it back to texture, and that's a bit, a bit better. But yeah, so just sort of play around with it, see what you can get. Um, and you know what? Start posting your stuff. Post it on YouTube, post it on uh, some picture sites, and uh, send me the links. Send me links and comments. Show me your work. It'd be really cool to see what other people are capable of, and. Um, be really nice to see um, some work being done um, but you know for now you can just stick with uh, doing some basic texturing uh, get um, some maps down specularity maps um, now the reason why we haven't gone into bump maps um, is because uh, what by the way bump I don't know if I explained this I probably did requires a texture to it You'll notice that if we, even if we crank this beyond measurement, nothing happens up here to our preview. And that's because we, it requires a texture. It's just that by default, it's set to 100. Um, but basically what it does is it sort of creates a fake 2D slash 3D uh, jaggediness to it which is really good for bricks or walls where it has to be like really really detailed 3D to it um, like little jaggedy edges so if I would go um, just quickly quickly go to Google here and type in um, Google images um, uh, wall Now a lot of these are textures here, but um, I think this is pretty good. You'll notice how it's so crumply, certain parts of it. Let's see if we can go full image without my computer freaking out too much. No, it's not going to load that. But you'll notice that it's got like, like these, um, especially right here, it's really crumply and jaggedy and wavy, and it's like you can feel the texture just by looking at it. Um, well that's what bump is for now a cereal box 
it doesn't have a texture to it. It's smooth. It's really smooth all around. So if we added a bump to it, it would look weird. So don't don't use a bump on something that has to be smooth. Use a bump on like a brick or something like that. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial so far, and I hope you guys are looking forward to more tutorials. I'm going to be getting into Lightwave next, uh, or Lightwave layout next, and we're going to be uh, looking at some animation and some animation techniques, and how to actually get started, and, uh, oh no, no, never mind, I got it right, and um, how to actually, you know, do things properly. Uh, I think I might actually save this, and uh, we can do a quick test render of it. And I'll probably post a picture at the end of the video just to show you what I got for a test render. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please do tune in for more. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. This has been The Guardian, signing out.